Let's look at Proverbs again. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 4. Proverbs 1 and verse 4 says to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. What's the purpose of the Proverbs? Well, we saw last time to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity. Now, verse 4, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So to give subtlety to the simple, it gives the average, common, plain, everyday guy like me and you, what he needs to contend against the big-time, educated, know-it-all men of this world with the wisdom of this world. You got a lot of men out there, way smarter than you, way bigger IQ than you, just know everything about everything. But they don't have any real Bible wisdom. Because if a man think he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. And remember when the Lord Jesus Christ was in the flesh, walking around where men can see him. Who was it that heard him? It was the common people that heard him gladly. And you go over there in Romans 16, 17 through 18... Paul talks about marking some people and avoiding them. And he talks about, he says, mark, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye learned, which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. The real smart guys that can deceive the hearts of the simple, the hearts of me and you, but you, you get Proverbs, you learn the Word of God, it'll give subtlety to the simple. It gives the common, average, plain man what he needs to contend. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to have a super high IQ. You get in the Word of God and believe it. And God will use the weak things of this world to confound the wise men of this world. So, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. To the young man, just like Timothy. Timothy was a young man, and Paul said to Timothy, he said in 2 Timothy 3.15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So from a child, Timothy knew the Holy Scriptures. Maybe you're a young man. Maybe you're already an older man, but you, maybe you're a, a babe in Christ. Get to, Go ahead and get to knowing the Scriptures. And it'll give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Solomon's trying to give the young man, Rehoboam, his son, knowledge and discretion. Obviously, Rehoboam didn't use it, but he's trying to give it to him. And God's trying to give that to you. He's trying to give you knowledge and discretion. Knowledge, if you got knowledge, you got a bunch of facts in your mind. But then discretion is the ability to make the right decision based on all that knowledge that you got stored up. What What's the good of all the knowledge you got stored up if you don't put it to use? You got to have discretion. Ability to make the right decision based on the knowledge that you've got stored up. So you get all these facts from the Word of God and then you put them to use. And the more you use them, the easier it'll be. So to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. 
the young man. Ecclesiastes 12.1, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Maybe you're a young man. Well, remember now thy creator while you're young. Now, verse 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. So a wise man will hear. And what does Romans 10, 17 say? Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You got a lot of people out there, they think that they know it all, and they won't even hear the word of God. They think they've already got it figured out. What's the thing that the Lord Jesus Christ always said? He that hath an ear, let him hear. What does it say in James 1.14? James 1 and verse 14 says, or James 1.19, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. You'd be better off just to be swift to hear and be slow to speak. You see, everybody, you get in a conversation with them, they're swift to speak, but they're slow to hear. While you're talking to them, they're just thinking about what they're going to say to you. They're not really thinking about what you're saying. You need to be swift to hear. A wise man will hear. You know, you no matter who it is, if the truth is the truth, no matter who's saying it to you, it doesn't matter if uh, the biggest Pharisee on the job is telling you the truth, the truth's the truth. Uh, just because he's a hypocrite and he's telling you to do something that he won't even do, or he's telling you to do something or correcting you, yeah, he does something way worse. If it's If what he's telling you to do is the truth, a wise man would hear and just and go ahead and do it, even though that truth is coming from the wrong source. So a wise man will hear and will increase learning. If you are if you work out on the job, you work at a factory and you have to train a lot of people. I have to train a lot of people. I've trained like I'd say in the past five years at least ninety people. And people are not willing to hear and increase learning. You give them two days and they're trying to tell you what to do. Even though they haven't even been there. Two days. Uh, you see the young men, they come in and they tell the older guys what to do. Even though those older guys have been there 30 years. And they've been there two days. Uh, while the old men... They think that since they're old, they know everything. So they will not even, um, they will not hear any correction from anybody. So the old men and the young men are in the same boat. They got too much pride to hear anything else. But the truth is the truth. If it's coming from a young man, if it's coming from an old man, if it's coming from the biggest Pharisee in the world, if you're a wise man, you'll hear the truth and you'll increase learning. So a wise man will hear and increase learning. And that's what you want to do. If you don't constantly learn something, you're consistently getting dumber. Because you forget something every day. Or at least every week or every month. You're forgetting something that you did know. You have to constantly go over things that you do know to keep them in your mind or fresh on your mind. So if you're not constantly learning something to replace the things that you're forgetting, your IQ is just getting lower and lower and lower. And if you're like me, you can't afford for your IQ to get any lower than it already is. So increase learning. Don't just stay the same because you're not really staying the same. You're losing something. And you need to get in the Word of God and increase learning. Second Peter 3.18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. You need to, to grow in grace, increase learning, 
get more knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How do you do that? Well, you read the Word of God because the whole thing's about Him. From Genesis to Revelation, you can find Him on every page. And every time you learn something about it, just a character in the Bible, you learn something about Jesus Christ because most of the characters are a type of Him or are persecuting a type of Him or something in the Word of God all the way through it you're going to learn something about the lord jesus christ so a wise man will hear he's going to open the word of god and listen he's going to take the truth no matter where it comes from and listen he's going to increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels now if you got understanding that's that's departing from evil you've got knowledge you've got wisdom and then you take the, that knowledge and that wisdom and that leads you to depart from evil. So you un, you understand what you're reading in the Word of God. You got a lot of people, maybe they, they got a taste for the Word of God. They got a taste for preaching. But they still just live like a lost person. Maybe they got a lot, some, they got some wisdom they could give you. They got some knowledge stored up. But they don't have understanding. They don't depart from evil. So a man of understanding will attain unto wise counsels. Shall attain unto wise counsels. So are you doing that? Are you looking at the Word of God and the things that you get, the counsel that you get from the Word of God? Are you going by it? Or are you just passing that counsel on to somebody else and not going by it yourself? Is what you're reading actually doing anything for your life or are you just thinking you're above it you see the devil he's got a lot of knowledge he's got a lot of wisdom but he doesn't have understanding now verse 6 to understand a proverb and the interpretation the words of the wise and their dark sayings so to understand a proverb well, you say, well, I don't understand any of these Proverbs. Well, you, you just continue learning. You continue receiving what you can learn, receiving what you do understand. And you will eventually understand the, the interpretation of the words and the dark sayings. You'll eventually get it. Not everything happens overnight. You know, people say, I don't understand the Bible. Well... You don't understand of it, understand it all overnight. Nobody understands the whole thing overnight. You got to stay at it, stay in it, and eventually you'll get what you didn't understand before. And you know, you, you got the Holy Spirit living in you, and you can ask the author. We don't just have the book. We got the author living in us. You don't understand something, ask the author. On down the road, he'll, he'll give you the interpretation. You know, people think that, well, the, the Bible means this to me. It may mean that to you. It may mean something else to this other guy. And that they think everybody just has their own interpretation. It doesn't really mean an absolute truth. But actually, it does mean an absolute truth. And... You know, Peter says himself in 2 Peter 1.20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. You can't just look at the Scriptures and say, well, this means this to me, and say that's for me. It may mean something different to you. No, it has an absolute truth. If that was, if that was true, then every man's just going to do what's right in his own eyes. Just like they did back in the book of Judges. There's an absolute truth. Now, obviously, it's got different applications. And the Bible's written in such a way that, you know, you could take your situation you're living in and get comfort for all kinds of different situations from, from a single verse. But still, there is an absolute truth to that verse. So, to understand the proverb and the interpretation, how do you do that? Well, if you don't understand it, the best thing to do is 
Read it, study it, compare Scripture with Scripture. You know what Paul says? Comparing spiritual with spiritual. 1 Corinthians 2.13 you don't understand a certain verse? Well, you take the words from that verse or a phrase from that verse and you search that throughout the entire Bible. Just like Paul says, 1 Corinthians 2, 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's how the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing Scripture with Scripture. So to understand a proverb and the interpretation... The words of the wise and their dark sayings. You can understand the words of the wise and the dark sayings through much reading, study, prayer, comparing Scripture with Scripture. It says in verse 7, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So we'll get more on the fear of the Lord next time.